my Power Rangers journey as starting in Singapore. My manager, Andrew, called and he goes, you've got a tape right now and it's for Power Rangers. We taped it in a closet in Media Corp. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of E-Junkies and for this episode, E-Junkies is going international. Well, sort of, we have an incredibly special guest who will be joining us all the way from Vancouver, Canada and he'll be talking about his role as Liu Kang on the Mortal Kombat. You will also recognize him as the Black Ranger from Power Rangers as well as his roles on Black Mirror, Aquaman and the upcoming TV series Kung Fu. So let us all welcome Ludi Lin. Hi Ludi, thank you for joining us all the way from um, Vancouver. Jumping to the first question, so you play Liu Kang on Mortal Kombat. Um, he is a fan favorite, classic character who has been there from the beginning. And I also understand that Mortal Kombat is a big part of your childhood. So could you share with us, you know, what it's like stepping to the shoes of, of this character? It's like reacquainting with one of my best friends when I was a kid. Um, it's also a, a big thanks to my inner child who put so much into the arcade games in Mortal Kombat. And it's also a dream come true and an homage to Robin Shu who played the first Liu Kang. It inspired me a lot seeing him in that role. And I hope to inspire, you know, next generations and to be able to pursue their dreams and most importantly, be the hero of their own journeys. What would you say is the difference between your interpretation of Liu Kang and, you know, what people are familiar with from the games? Oh, that's a good question. Well, he's a lot dirtier. How so? <laughs> Uh, his hair is very scraggly. He probably hasn't showered for months. Because my version of Liu Kang doesn't come from America and he doesn't go there for a tournament. He's been wandering around Inner Mongolia in order to fulfill one of Raiden's quests in gathering the Earth's champions to defend Earth Realm. So each time it restarts, I think of it as um, a reincarnation. And our reincarnation is about blood. And obviously, it's the first rated R Mortal Kombat, so there will be blood. But also, blood means family, blood means history, and blood means the commonality between all human beings, like the blood that runs in our veins. And to me, Liu Kang is like the heart. It pumps blood throughout the Mortal Kombat universe because he's been there since the beginning. I read an article where it said that you did some prep by playing the Mortal Kombat games and you were committed to only using Liu Kang. So how many hours of, of Mortal Kombat would you say you played in, in preparation for this role? A lot, and I'm not that good at it. I've been trying so hard just so I don't get embarrassed myself when a fan challenges me. I'm always better at those special moves where it's down forward punch, down forward kick. But Liu Kang's fireball is always back forward or forward yeah. back. So it's more difficult for me. So yes, my, my thumbs have gotten a very good workout through all, all yeah. of this. Did you play uh, amongst the cast? If you do, who would you say is the best Mortal Kombat player? To be honest, Joe's hotel room was always the headquarters in the arcade for us. We'd always go to his room to hang out, watch movies, and then play Mortal Kombat, amongst other games. He's like a big kid at heart. He's probably the hardest gamer out of all of us, and he was the best. While we're on the topic of preparation for the role, so you mentioned that Liu Kang has a lot of iconic moves and combos. So, you know, were there any physical preparations you had to do to kind of recreate those moves in the films? Oh yes, there was a lot. There's very specific preparations in terms of the moves. We're introducing the concept of Ar Arcana. And what Arcana really means, I think it's a Latin term and it means inner mystery. So I tie it in with the Chinese concept of Qi. So when Liu Kang, especially being trained in the Shaolin, when he summons his inner arcana, he needs to master his chi. So it's all about flowing. And other than that, it's just to get really jacked and really ripped. And that physical preparation has a lot to do with diet. And then it's just constant training and constant choreography and constant fighting. Sometimes I get up at one o'clock in the morning to go to the gym. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think most, if not all of the cast members have had some experience with martial arts. So who would you say is like the best fighter? Who would you not want to meet in the dark alley when you're alone? I think ironically, one of the fighters with the least experience would be the one that I'm scared of the most. Cece, who plays Melina in the movie. She's very small, but she is super feisty and she's a queen. Uh, she'll take anyone on, no matter how big they are, and she'll probably rip their throats out. Other than that, like, you're right, a, a lot of people from the cast are martial artists, so this is even more authentic that way. Film adaptations of video games have, well, traditionally and historically not 
been that well received. Mm-hmm. Are you concerned about that at all with Mortal Kombat? Are you like bracing yourself from potential backlash from the critics as well as passionate fans? Well, let me ask you, Brian. What was your favorite video game movie? I would say I enjoyed Tomb Raider, and that didn't get really very good uh, critical acclaim. I, I'm not concerned about this one. I think we struck a good balance between what we want to give to the fans and what we would want to give to the film world. When I first spoke to our director Simon, he's not a video game player, but he was open enough to all of us who are video game players to know what we should put in there that would appease the fans. But he is a storyteller, and he is the world builder. So he wants to build that universe of Mortal Kombat into the MKU where anything can happen. And there's 18 realms in Mortal Kombat, so he really wanted you to get that sense that this this is a greater world, and there is a story involved. Yeah, I think just by the reactions I saw from the fans when they saw the trailer, I already believe that they know there's something deeper in here rather than just hanging on to the video game IP and throwing some random action in there. I'm curious to know while we're on this topic of backlash, were you surprised at all、um, with the reaction that people had to a previous film of yours, Power Rangers? You know, it's very hard for an actor to actually judge a film objectively. You know, because we're so attached to it, it's very complicated. Did you like it personally? You can be totally honest. I don't mind. I was very excited、um, with the announcement of it. I felt、yeah. like it needed a little bit more campiness, perhaps, because there was kind of like what made the '90s series so enjoyable. I had more of a kick towards the end when, like, you know, the theme song played, and I felt like we maybe needed a little bit more of that throwbacks. And I have to say, I really enjoyed、um, your your performance in it, as、uh, a lot of my friends did. I like seeing that quiet moments where you have with your mother, and we get to see like you know a bit of that family story going on there. Generally, I was okay with it. Hey, thanks for being, thanks for giving me that. Thanks for being honest. I always like to hear fans' opinions, no matter what. Yeah, so I, I guess a lot of people expected more campiness, more of that joyous feeling, that like easygoing Power Rangers feeling when you're back at the '90s. I think Dean just had a different vision for it, and I don't fault him for that. Otherwise, where's the creativity? That is the beginning of my my journey to make Mortal Kombat or to make whatever goes on from here. And I want to make things that will change the world, and I want to make things that will touch every single Asian person, every single other person around the globe. So that that was a part of my journey, and it's still one of my favorite things that I've ever done. I assume as an Asian actor in Hollywood, you don't get many opportunities to be in a cast with this much diversity, or, or you know, this much Asian actors in the cast. And in Mortal Kombat, you kind of get that. So can you share with us what is the experience like? You know, being in an environment full of people who possibly share similar cultural backgrounds and. Experiences. It's definitely a rare moment in Hollywood. I mean, I work in China as well, and I've been on sets in Singapore, and it's totally natural. You just feel like you belong there. It was like that on Mortal Kombat, and I think that、um, Hollywood is waking up to that, especially now when China's overtaken its box office and streaming is a platform that breaks down borders and breaks down all these boundaries. When you're making a story, you're not just making it for one little piece of North America. But you're making it for the entire world, and that should be that way. It's to find the right balance. It has changed a lot since Crazy Rich Asians, but where's Crazy Rich Asians too? When's that <laughs> coming? Joy Luck Club was an Asian American movie that featured a lot of Asians produced in Hollywood, and it took more than 20 years, 25 years, to do Crazy Rich Asians, which is like the successor of it. Robin Show did Mortal Kombat. More than 23 years ago, it took another 20-something years for us to do another one with a significant portion of Asians in the martial arts movie. Don't make us wait a quarter decade between these things, right? We want to act. We've got the talent. We got to the Hollywood party late, you know, as Asians, but we got a lot of partying to catch up on. So we got to party. We got to party loud. You mentioned that you you were on set in Singapore. Can you share more about that? Like, what what were you shooting, and and what was your experience like in Singapore? Oh, this is an interesting story. The first time I stopped by was when I was shooting Marco Polo in Malaysia, and then I visited a friend of mine in Singapore, and then that's when I got the call. Actually, I was sitting in a cafe with my friend Michelle, and my manager Andrew called, and he goes, "You've got a tape right now, and it's for Power Rangers." And that's the beginning of my Power Rangers journey. It started in Singapore. We taped it in a closet in Media Corp. Whenever I'm in Johor in Malaysia and there's studio shooting, I try to go across Singapore. The last time I did it, I don't like traffic in big cities. 
and I have an electric skateboard that goes quite fast. So the last time I went across that bridge at the border, this is my way to skip the traffic at the border to Singapore. I bet it's the first time anyone skated across the border. <laughs> Here we go. So then when I got off and tried to walk across into the immigrations, they looked at me because I don't think anyone has ever skateboarded across that border before. And they didn't know what to do. So we had to go around again. And they got me back in line upstairs where the people was. <laughs> it was a very awkward situation. Oh man, I love Singapore so much. Looking at the roles that you've had, and you've got roles in Power Rangers, Upper Man, Black Mirror, uh, Mortal Kombat and upcoming Kung Fu, the series. They are all roles that are like superhero related and all requiring martial arts. Are you concerned about typecasting? I'm not really concerned. I'm having such a good time. Sure, they, they all do action, but all the roles are very different between those. And then the, there are those secret movies that people don't pay attention to because it's not Hollywood. I guess it's kind of like a double identity. My double identity is when I lack inspiration, I can always move. And the things I do in China are very different. I did an indie film called Summer Night, Xia Ye Qi Shi, and I had to do that in a Sichuan dialect. And I play an overweight, chain-smoking, retired soldier who has to take care of his son. And that's coming out in June. So I can always do that for my own exploration. It's actually really cathartic. My career is like a sphere. I don't just want to get this one side really big. I'm going to be lopsided. So I want to expand as much as I can until it looks like the entire world. And that's my goal. And then after that, who knows? There's always more stories to tell. So moving forward, what is next for Ludi Lin? I hope that people are surprised just as I am surprised by what I get to do next. People always ask me what the big break is. And I don't think there is a big break. I think it's just a series of waves and I surf them all, you know? And okay, we, obviously we can't finish it without this question. Do you know if you'll be part of the Power Rangers reboot? I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on with it. The only thing I know is I think it's going to be campy like you want. So Brian, <laughs> it's going to be for you. Maybe, maybe, we more up my alley. Okay, thank you so much, Ludi. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Hey, thanks and for your chat, man. Once again, we would like to thank Ludi for coming on and very openly sharing, you know, about his experiences as an Asian actor in Hollywood, more about his roles and, you know, his, his experiences in Singapore, you know. Who would have thought that he made the tape for Power Rangers at Mediacorp? Like, Wow, that link, guys. So if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe for more similar content. Bye.